you want the best i5 13600K PC build for gaming, but what's the best memory, motherboard, cooler, and more? Don't worry, you've come to the right place. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now the reviews are in, and the Intel i5 13600K and 13600KF deliver amazing gaming performance, on par with the best gaming CPU in 2022. So today, we'll go over exactly what you need for your 13600K gaming PC build, and we'll take our build head to head against its rising competition. Remember, if you get value out of the video, please give it a like as it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, Let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by NordPass with an exclusive offer by going to nordpass.com slash PC Builder. Password hackers want your stuff. Don't be a victim, get NordPass. NordPass makes logging in easy and secure across multiple devices. Stop forgetting passwords. NordPass stores them all in one place, allowing you to easily log in with their autofill feature. Quickly generate unique secure passwords for every site, store credit card and even personal details in your encrypted vault. Get an exclusive NordPass deal plus four additional months for free by using the link in the video description or use code PCBuilder at checkout. The i5-13600K and i5-13600KF are Intel's 13th gen Raptor-like processors. At the time of this video, both the i5-13600K and KF they're selling for right around $300 US. You can use the links in the video description to check out current pricing and availability. The i5-13600K and KF are unlocked parts meaning they can be overclocked using a compatible Z series motherboard, which are the Z690 and Z790 motherboards. And the 13600K and KF can either use DDR4 or DDR5 RAM, which is locked in when you choose the motherboard. More on the best motherboard for i5-13600K later in the video. The 13600K and KF have six performance cores and eight efficiency cores, an increase of four efficiency cores over the 12600K. Each of the performance cores provides two threads, while each of the efficiency cores provides one thread. And the 13600K runs these cores slightly faster than the 12600K, increasing the boost frequency on the P cores about 4%, and the E cores around 10%. Now, in order to accomplish this, the 13600K, it draws quite a bit more power with a 184 watt TDP boost, which is 34 watts higher than the 12600K. Of course, we'll discuss more about PSU considerations later in the video. But what about performance? The great news is that the i5-13600K does extremely well in multi-threaded production workloads, often trading blows with the more expensive Ryzen 7700X, while easily besting the Ryzen 7600X and the Ryzen 5800X 3D. Now compared to Intel's own 12th generation K CPUs, the 13600K often performs between the 12700K and 12900K, and it sometimes beats both in certain production benchmarks. But the reality is that any of the CPUs I just mentioned are pretty incredible compared to anything that came before them. So unless you're doing production tasks professionally, it's unlikely you'll ever notice the difference between them. But what about gaming performance? The great news is that using DDR5 RAM, the i5-13600K and KF are among the world's fastest gaming CPUs using the RTX 4090. Now, depending on the test suite, the 13600K clocks in about as fast as the 12700K or 12900K, very slightly behind the 5800X 3D and just a bit further behind the Ryzen 7000 CPUs. With DDR4 RAM, that performance falls off about 6%. But remember at the time of filming, there's still a massive gap between DDR4 and DDR5 prices. It's also good to note that as we go up in resolution to 1440p and even 4K, that the difference drops substantially as we become more GPU bound. So the 13600K offers world-class performance to value-minded gamers looking to maximize price to performance or those who are looking to build a hybrid gaming and production system. So should you buy the i5-13600K versus the i5-13600KF? Now the only difference is that the i5-13600K has an integrated GPU while the 13600KF, it doesn't. So since you should be pairing either CPU with a dedicated GPU, this essentially does not matter for anyone other than professional level video editors. For those doing heavy video encoding workloads in the overall video editing process, Intel's QuickSync technology allows the integrated GPU to work with your dedicated GPU to encode video faster than simply using the dedicated GPU alone. So if you're a professional level video editor, make sure to get the 13600K 
For anyone else, just get whichever one is cheaper at the time of purchase. What's the best GPU for the i5-13600K? Now typically when we're building a gaming PC, we're looking to get the fastest GPU possible while getting a CPU that just won't bottleneck our GPU. Now given how fast CPUs have become, the minimum GPU I would pair with a 13600K for gaming is an RTX 3070 or 3080 on the Nvidia side or a Radeon RX 6800 or faster GPU on the AMD side. Anything less than that and we're probably overspending on the CPU and should be investing that money on the GPU instead. From that point, there's really no maximum GPU as the 13600K is very, very fast. In particular, the 13600K will be great with any of the new Radeon RX 7000 GPUs or the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte or even the RTX 4090. Of course, if you max out the GPU and you still have money left to spend, then I'd consider moving up to an even faster CPU. Let's talk about DDR4 versus DDR5 and the best RAM for the i5-13600K. Now this is important because motherboards either come in DDR4 versions or DDR5 versions. As we saw earlier, there's only about a 6% performance difference between 3600 speed DDR4 and 6400 speed DDR5 at 1080p using an RTX 4090 and even less of a difference at 1440p. Right now, the cost gap between those kits is very large. A two by eight gigabyte DDR4 3600 CL16 kit, it's only about $70 right now. Well, the DDR5 6400 kits are still up around $250 or more. And you can use the links in the video description to check out the current pricing. So right now, it just doesn't make any sense to go DDR5 unless you've already maxed out everything else. Use that extra $180 to get faster graphics card, a better cooler, jump up to a faster CPU, or do any number of other upgrades. Of course, we do expect at some point in the future that DDR5 prices will come down far enough and possibly DDR4 prices will start going up as production shifts to DDR5 to the point that DDR5 starts to make sense. That being said, don't fall for the future-proofing argument that spending a huge amount on DDR5 makes sense because you can use it in a future build. Because realistically, by the time you go to upgrade, DDR5 6400 RAM will almost certainly be considered slow. So my advice, as usual, is just to focus on what you need right now. And remember, of course, when installing the RAM kit, it will run at its native speed until you go into the BIOS and activate the XMP profile, which will allow it to run at its full rated speed. Now let's talk about the best motherboards for i5-13600K. While 13th gen Intel Raptor-like processors can use any of the 600 or 700 series boards, including the cheaper B660 motherboards. There are a couple of reasons why I recommend getting a Z690 motherboard, possibly a Z790 if their prices come down. The first reason is that Z690 and Z790 motherboards will allow you to get the most out of your i5-13600K, including overclocking, which can only be done on Z series motherboards. The second reason is that while you can use a B660 motherboard, several of the B660 motherboards were tested with 12th gen higher core count CPUs and they didn't properly run them at the full boost frequency. Furthermore, many of the more budget B660 motherboards have weaker VRMs, and with the power-hungry i5-13600K, I'd recommend using something more robust. The final reason is price. Z690 motherboards are available at almost the same price as B660 motherboards, and offer much better features, so they make a lot of sense. We do go through the best Z690 and best Z790 motherboards in our best motherboard for 13th gen Intel video, so check that out for a full listing. Do remember that if you get a 600 series motherboard, Z690 or B660, it needs to have BIOS flashback on it, so you can update the BIOS to one that will actually run the 13600K. Now the differences between Z690 and Z790, they just boil down to slightly better DDR5 compatibility on some boards. But since most of you will be likely getting DDR4, then effectively there's no difference. Looking at the current market, our favorite picks continue to be cheaper Z690 motherboards with robust gaming features like upgraded ALC1200, ALC1220, or ALC4080 audio codecs, as well as solid VRMs, BIOS flashback, and a number of M.2 slots and good rear panel I.O. In particular, we recommend the Gigabyte Gaming X Z690 DDR4, currently going for around $170 US, or the ASRock Z690 Extreme DDR4, going for around $185. Now, if you don't care about the audio 
any of the budget Z690 or Z790 motherboards will do. And models like the ASRock Phantom Gaming Z690 are available for as little as $140 or the MSI Pro Z690-A for $159. We'll have a full list of motherboards with links in the video description so you can check out current pricing and availability in your region. Now let's talk about the best CPU cooler for the i5-13600K. Out of the box, the i5-13600K it's designed to run at the thermal throttle limit of 100 degrees Celsius. In testing, most reviewers use a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, and they still hit the thermal throttle limit. That's because this CPU is designed to eat any available cooling under load in order to increase frequency and increase performance. So the more cooling we give it, the more performance we get. At a minimum, we want to at least run a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler or a high-performance air cooler like the Deepcool AK620, Scythe Fuma 2, or similar style coolers. Now the good news is that cooling has gotten really cheap in the last year, with the coolers I just mentioned giving the same performance in the $60 range as older $100 high performance air coolers like the Noctua NHD15. Now one thing to note with coolers is that with the CPU running at the thermal throttle limit, your CPU cooler, it might run kinda loud. However, most coolers deliver about the same performance at 80% fan speed as they do at 100% fan speed and with lower noise. So consider adjusting the fan curve to limit the overall system noise at the thermal throttle limit. Finally, let's talk about PSUs because at least right now, this is a bit of a sore point. Given how much power the i5-13600K consumes at peak load and how power hungry the GPUs are that we will be pairing with it, it's important to consider exactly how much power you will need. Now refer back to our best power supply 2022 video for information on how to size your PSU. What I am finding as I put together i5-13600K builds is that if we use our usual sizing rule of 1.5 times the max draw, we often end up needing 1200 watts or greater on the PSU which can get really expensive really fast. I'd also make sure to get at least a PSU rated on the B tier or better on the PSU cultist list, which again, we do go through in our PSU video. Let's jump into the builds. Now note, I've zeroed out the items in the build that are gonna be the same across all the builds we're gonna compare. We'll look at a budget level build, DDR4, we'll look at a more premium DDR4 version, and we'll look at DDR5, and we'll compare it to the 5800X 3D, as well as the 7600X. So we've got prices in for the CPU, the cooler, the motherboard, the RAM, as well as the power supply. The power supply can be a little bit of an issue with the 13600K just because it draws quite a bit more power than the 5800X 3D or the 7600X. Jumping into the build, we went with a budget a dual tower air cooler. This is pretty much the kind of style you're looking for. Two towers, six heat pipes, great, two fans on it. Thermal right Peerless Assassin for $40. Obviously, more cooling, we can get more performance, but this is the minimum I would go. For the motherboard, ASRock Z690 Phantom Gaming for $140. Do not get a B660. I know some people are recommending that. Just, you don't need to do that. B660s have power limitations on the motherboards. You don't need to do that when you can get a Z690 for literally almost the same price. Just make sure you get one with BIOS flashback. For the memory, just standard two by eight gigabyte DR4 3600 CL16, $70. This stuff is super cheap. You can go a little bit faster here. Just don't overspend on your memory. You're not gonna get that much more performance. You really wanna keep investing in that graphics card, get a motherboard with better audio on it, those kind of features first. Now this particular build, we went with a Radeon RX 6800 XT. This is about the card that you want if you're gonna buy a 13600K and invest in that platform. If you're gonna get a much cheaper graphics card, you should be looking at the 12400 or a Ryzen 5600. Instead, you'll get a lot more bang for your buck that way. This platform is really designed for a Radeon 6800 or higher, an RTX 3070 or higher, and I really like the 6800 XT. $500 GPU right now as I'm filming this, I expect these to continue to go down, especially with all the new fancy graphics cards launching very soon. And finally for the power supply, we went with a thousand watt power supply. You're gonna end up tending to need somewhere between a thousand and twelve hundred watts, depending on your kind of safety factor in there. So you're looking to spend, you know, about $160 maybe up to 240 if you need 1200 watts. That's if you get like a 4090 or 3090 Ti, something with a huge amount of power draw. Overall, $728 for the total platform cost subtracted out all the parts that are the same. Not bad for a higher end build, even though this lacks some of the more premium features. 
So how does our build stack up against budget builds with the 7600X and 5800X 3D? Well, you can see with the similar level of cutdown features, slower memory, DDR5 5600CL40 in this case, but less power draw, so we went with a cheaper power supply. Even that, $741 against our 13600K build. 13600K probably gonna come out about tied with the 7600X here in terms of gaming with this slower memory here, this slower DDR5 memory. And obviously it's gonna brutally destroy it in terms of productivity. Against the 5800X 3D, uh, the 5800X 3D for gaming only does come out ahead. It's just $647 is really tough to beat. Why, again, less energy, smaller power supply, cheaper power supply. And then on the motherboard, AM4 has been out forever and you can get B550 motherboards with pretty good features for about $100. This one is a more cut down motherboard similar to the ASRock Z690 board that we use for the 13600K, similar cooler and the 5800X 3D itself has had a huge price cut. So overall, I would expect the 5800X 3D maybe slightly outperform it here in terms of gaming with the 6800 XT, mostly at 1080p. If you turn this to 1440p with this level of graphics card, I don't think you'd see that much of a difference between them. Obviously the 13600K is going to destroy this in productivity. That being said, the 5800X 3D, not bad in terms of productivity either. So if you only do that stuff occasionally, this thing is gonna seem like a monster. So if we're looking to make our build a little bit more premium, the first thing I would do, obviously, just spend a little bit more on our motherboard and get a board with upgraded audio on it, ALC1220, audio codec, better VRMs overall, better feature set. Again, just as long as it's got BIOS flashback, that's what I would be looking for here. We've got the ASRock Z690 Extreme. This is a DDR4 only board, so don't look for it for DDR5. Again, we'll have links down in the video description. Check those out. The other thing I would do is i definitely upgrade the cooler, Deepcool AK6. 20 here for $65. This is a super high performance air cooler. It beats the Noctua NHD15 in certain tests. Or I would go to liquid cooling. That would be my other alternative route. You could possibly go slightly faster speed memory here, maybe DDR4 4000 CL16. You just don't want to go so fast that you overcome the memory controller on the CPU itself and end up running what's called asynchronously, where the memory controller is running at a different speed than the memory itself. So I think 3600 CL16 is likely the sweet spot, but if you do want to push it, you could go to 4000 CL16, 4000 CL18. Then of course, the other thing we want to do is invest more in a graphics card. I've dumped in an RTX 3090 here just for the power draw, just so you can see that even with the 3090 on here, it's not terrible. Uh, we can probably get away with a thousand watt unit. I might feel compelled to go to 1200 watts for just for safety reasons with a 3090 or a 3090 Ti for sure. 4090 actually uses less energy than the 3090 Ti, which is good. And it looks like the transient power spikes are a lot less frequent and a lot less pronounced. So that's a good thing if you wanna go 4080 or 4090, or maybe go with one of the new RX 7900 XTX or XT cards. So for a more premium 13600K build, we end up $790, not too bad. And again, it doesn't take much to premiumize the 13600K build. That's one of the nice things about it. If we look compared to the 7600X, more premium, the DDR5 is a killer once the speed gets up to something that AMD would recommend for it. Again, when we're using a motherboard with better audio on it, when we're using a slightly better cooler for it. $902 for the 7600X, yikes, that gets expensive really quick. But for the 5800X 3D, again, because cheaper B550 motherboards have great features that are only about $150. This is a Sue Strix board for $147 right now. That's how cheap some of these boards are. And of course, the 5800X 3D doesn't really need that much more cooling. So we can continue to go with that dual tower style cooler for only $40, great. And the lower end power supply, $700, again, not a huge gulf between the two, especially when you throw in the cost of the graphics card and the overall system. You know, a $70 difference between the two is not bad, especially if you're looking at the 13600K to do any kind of productivity work. Let's briefly go over what a DDR5 build would look like, more ultra premium, if we're using DDR5 memory that would actually justify using it and getting the platform. That would be something like this kit here of G-Skill Trident Z5, 
32 gigabytes. Now there's no 16 gigabyte kits at the time of filming at this speed, 6400 CL32. This is what all the reviewers are using. In fact, I believe they're using this exact kit right here. So when you see those benchmarks, this is the kit of memory that they're using for the DDR5 testing. Now the good news is for Z690, because DDR5 memory was bonkers when 12th gen Intel came out, there's a lot of Z690 DDR5 motherboards out there that you can get at quite a price discount because they didn't sell very well. Z690 AORUS Ultra, this is a high-end motherboard you can get for $199 right now. And certainly there are other types of DDR5 motherboards out there with more premium features. So you do get a slight discount on that. But overall, as you can see for almost $1,000, it quickly inflates the overall cost of our build. That being said, I do expect these builds to become relevant once these DDR5 prices come down. If this comes down closer to $140, then it's all of a sudden, hey, that's maybe a good place to invest my money. Remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like because it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Of course, remember to check out all the links down in the video description, motherboards, coolers, everything else, pricing and availability in your region. And if you didn't see our best Z690 and Z790 motherboard guide for 13th gen Intel, I'll put the video right here. Check it out. We go through all the features that you need for your 13600K. And we'll catch you on the next one.